All right, so the next thing that we want to look at is a construction that's called the dot product. Um, so we'll begin with a, with a definition. Okay. Um, so we're going to let, uh, let's say, u equal to u1, u2, and v will be equal to v1, v2. And you can make an analogous definition in three dimensions. We'll talk about that uh, in a second. Um, so. The dot product of u and v, um, which is denoted now that the name comes from the notation, so it's u dot v, sort of a bold dot in between. Um, and it's given by u dot v is u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2. Okay, so that's the dot product. Um, now, if uh, if I mean say three dimensions, and I have say u1, u2 u3 dotted with a vector v1, v2, v3. It's going to be u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2 plus u3 times v3, right? We just add on the, the third term. Uh, okay, now um, this is also sometimes called the scalar product. Why? Because the result is a scalar. Uh, we're going to see that there's also another type of product that produces a vector in the next section uh, called the cross product, right? Um, so make sure you keep that in mind, right, that this, this output here, this is a number, right? Uh, it's not a vector. Uh, a common mistake that a lot of students will make is to try to write this dot product as a vector. Um, so these two terms, rather than adding them together, students will put those as components of a new vector. Uh, but it is not a vector product, it is actually a number. Um, and it's, it's an important number because the, the dot product, in a sense, if you you know, if you're coming at things from sort of an algebraic perspective, if you had initially defined vectors as objects satisfying certain algebraic properties, uh, without, you know, this kind of, we started with this idea of magnitude and directions. We kind of came at it from a geometric uh, vantage point. Uh, but if you come at things from an algebraic point of view, the dot product is actually the thing that endows geometry into this world of vectors. Without the dot product, there's sort of no geometry. Um, that's the, the sort of linear algebra take on things, right? Um, and the sort of the way that you might even see the dot product defined in a, let's say, a physics context is sort of much more pictorially. So you might have two vectors, say u and v. Okay. Now, if you have any two vectors, there's going to be an angle between them, like so, theta. Now we'll, uh, we'll require here that theta is between 0 and pi, right? Um, just to disambiguate between the other one that goes all the way around. Um, and so the other definition that you will see is, is the following one. Uh, you will see the definition of the dot product given as um, u dot v is the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cosine theta. This is also a result that you will see. Okay? Um, now, both 
both of these definitions have their uses. Uh, this is obviously far easier to compute, and so that's the definition that we work with most of the time. Uh, but this one actually gives us some geometric information. It tells us something about what's going on. Right? Uh, in particular, notice that the dot product, if we know the magnitudes of the two vectors, uh, and we know the dot product, uh, this allows us to determine the angle between a pair of vectors. Um, so in particular, this would give us some information about, let's say, whether vectors were parallel or um, perpendicular or orthogonal, which is the, the word that we use in that context. We'll be getting into that shortly. Um, now, you, you might be looking at this and wondering, like, how do, you, how do you get from here to there? Like, these look like very different things, right? Um, and there's, um, there's a way to do it, which is draw this vector in here. Um, I guess I want, um, let's see, this way, right? That's u minus v, right? v added to u minus v gives me, gives me u, right? Um, and, and so the way that you actually connect the two is through the, the law of cosines. If we, if we were to label the three sides of this diagram with, say, a, b, c, right, where a here is the the magnitude of, sorry, um, I guess it's V as I've drawn it. Maybe I should, uh, you know what, just to clean things up, let's do it the other way around. Make that B, make that A, so yes, A is the magnitude of U, B is the magnitude of V, C is the magnitude of U minus V. All right, now, um, from here you can actually connect things up. What you do is you say, okay, well, there's a theorem that you probably saw in high school at some point in like your trigonometry class called the law of cosines. It says uh, in, a, in a situation like this, uh, where C is the side that is opposite that angle theta, right, and you don't necessarily have a right angled triangle here, uh, the law of cosines, and hopefully I will get this right. Um, so the law of cosines says that uh, c squared should be a squared plus b squared. Now that's, that's what you would have if it's a right angled triangle, right? Um, but if it's not a right angled triangle, then you get, and I believe it's a 2, I hope I'm getting this right, 2a b cosine theta. Right? So this is kind of like a, a correction term to the Pythagorean theorem uh, in the case where uh, you don't have a right angled triangle. Right? Now if you do have a right, if, if theta is actually um, a right angle, cos theta would be zero, that part goes away and you're back to the Pythagorean theorem. Right? Um, okay, so that's the law of cosines and what we're going to do is we're going to see how this actually um, fits together. Um, and connects them up. Uh, we maybe won't do it immediately. I think we'll pause here, um, take a short break from this video. We'll, we'll throw the proof in uh, maybe a couple of videos later after we've done some examples.